Can you view my screen? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So we were discussing last time uh, some properties of compact subsets of RL. So those interested, uh, those who are interested in, uh, in analysis, I actually are invited to uh, to discuss these properties for matrix spaces and uh, think of those things as in, in, in general topological spaces as well. So think whether this is the same properties are true or not. All right. So now let's, uh, uh, now today we'll go towards the Hinworld theorem, which uh, in the very beginning, I tried to take a very short route to, to it, which doesn't do, didn't work. So an exercise a closed subset so so that a closed subset of compact set in Rn is compact. So this will be, this This is important. We'll use this in the proof of any world theorem in Rn. All right. And this proof is very easy. All right. Now the main step in the proof of Hinworld theorem. So the main thing is to show that uh, the following theorem, which we have not. Yeah. So this one. So this is the main part. Of course, Hinworld theorem says that any compact subset in R n is closed and bounded. So, but this is actually the, the this is actually the main thing. This is actually the main thing. So before going into further, let us uh, give ourselves some preparation. Let I n be a sequence of intervals closed intervals. So I n equal to n comma B n such that I n plus one is contained in I n for all n natural number. Then intersection of I n in from one to infinity is not equal to infinity. All right. How do you prove it? Yeah. This you have seen actually in an analysis one course. So how do you prove it? A nested interval property. Yeah, it has nested inter interval property, then intersection is non-empty. Infinite intersection is non-empty. Sir, if we take the lower bounds, then the limit of the lower bounds and the limit of the upper bounds uh, converges, and the closed interval of the limit of the lower bounds and the limit of the upper bounds is inside every set. Right, so that's the idea, right. Right, so see here, we have we have shown this property, this property hold for class of compact sets having 
having having having having finite intersection property. So this property holds for such sets. Here we are not going through compact sets. We are going through a, a nice class of sets in R fast. Then we show that this property means having finite intersection property implies that this is non-empty. And, and the idea said uh, just before is, is actually the correct one. So what you need to do here, uh, we are not going to uh, show which interval lies there. We want to show actually, uh, we want to show actually the, at least there is a one point, there is one point. So consider this thing. So consider all sets, sets such that n such that i n equal to a n comma b n. Consider this set. Call this a. Right? And what do you need to do? Supremum of such supremum of a. Let x naught. So a is a definitely a non-empty. So a is non-empty set, non-empty bounded set, right? How do you prove it is bounded? Any of the Bs, for example, B1 works. B1 works, yeah. And other side, it's just A1, right? So this A is non-empty bounded. So it's all A and slash or equal to A1, B1 for all any men, right? So, so the supremum of A exists, we call it X. So let X be the supremum of this. Right? Now what, do, what, what happens? So this AN is less or equal to X, right? And, and can you say this less or equal to BM for all M N N yeah. This part by the property by the definition of supremum. Supremum and and this one, this one holds because a n is less or equal to a m plus n less or equal to b m plus n less or equal to b m, right? So for all m n in it. All right, so a n is less or equal to b m for all m n. That gives you that x less or equal to b. So p m of a n will also be less or equal to b m for all m. All right, and so, th so this implies x belongs to, uh, yeah, x belongs to the intersection of I n. All right. So this is this is simple. So let let, let us look at this is called lemma one. Lemma two. So now let's let's look at in uh, 
Rn. So let uh, Kn is sorry Km is a one m b one m a n m b n m all right uh, m m is a natural number such that k m plus 1 is subset of k m for all m n n then intersection k m m from 1 to infinity is not empty okay so this was in one variable sequence of intervals in r now we go to more variable inside Rn, and if we have those boxes, instead of uh, instead of having one interval in R, we now have boxes. But boxes will also satisfy this property. This property, Km plus one is contained in Km. Then it will also have this. How do you prove it? Yeah, so just one line, one line answer. How do you prove? Apply lemma one uh, coordinate wise. Right, so you need to look at the intervals i uh, well, i m as i m one, let's say a one m b one m. Right, so actually, instead of one, you put J and you put J here, J here. Okay, now since since KM plus one is contained in KM, it's I in. plus one j is containing i m j all right is this clear or oh, no i didn't put a bracket here yeah right is this clear for all m m in n now j is j j actually so what does this one is this j is is the jth interval in the product product okay Now apply lemma one in each sequence for each sequence I M J Rem to get this intersection of I M J over M is not empty, right? So let X J belongs to intersection I M J. This implies X one, X two, X M belongs to intersection of K N. Excuse me, just. Fine. 
xn plus 1 uh, yeah this lies in infinity all right so this implies this intersection of kn it's not in all right so next one would be the compactness now we are ready All right, so we have, so what we need to prove is, of course, this is actually the no, not the form of any world theorem, but this is the main part. So I wrote here, the hand world theorem. The set of the form, this A1, B1 cross A and B N is compact. Compact in, in, Right. Of course, compact set, whether it lies in the, so we discussed subspace topology last time. So open set, closed set, actually de quite dependent on the topology of the space, right? If you look at a sphere and, comp and, and a subset of there. Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Okay, so uh, what we needed to do is is we need to consider an open cover, and we want to show that it has finite subcover. Oh, well, we just consider uh, an open cover and. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, suppose there is an open cover such that this has no finite subcover. So, what process we did last time was correct. We we look at look at a box and each of the sides you divide each of the interval each of this sides of these things you divide by two so in case of in case of part two you have after the first division you have four choices and each four of them if all of them has finite sub cover i mean this cover has finite subcover for all of them. That means the whole union will have for for whole union of this big box have finite subcover. That would contradict the assumption. So, which means one of them should not have finite subcover. We assume this is the one. 
so which we call this as b b1 b cross b2 b cross b a well yeah we call this this box as k1 the first one so we just put it as k1 and now we repeat this process so we divide this uh, k1 into again into four parts in r2 so there will be two to the power n parts in rn so there again we apply the same logic the each of the each of the subdivision should not have i mean one of the subdivision should not have finite sub cover or the, that that cover should not have finite sub cover and call that k2 so here we doing this process we get a get a sequence kn right right so here what we would like to do uh, maybe i mention one thing yeah that is fine so we continue this process to get kn Okay, so we get a sequence of, of such sets, product sets, which actually you see nested, right? Again, now the point is whether the we we need to know the intersection of those things, known end. Why? Because because of the following. We need to actually, at some point of time, we want to put whole KN inside one open cover, one member of the open cover, one member of this one. And that would actually will contradict the assumption. So how to do that? We look at we, we, we look at this process, how we did the process. So that the first step, the length of the each interval is getting half. Right. So length of the each interval is getting getting half. And similarly here, each of them. And at the second step, the lengths uh, are actually divided by the original length divided by four. Right? Length of each sub intervals. And at the nth mth step. We have the length of this each 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 interval is is the is is actually yeah this this is this is the RG. this is one over two to the power m times the original length right. Right, so here this this was uh, what I intended, but you see here uh, well, so what is the diameter? Here there is there is a little mistake here. So let's look at this thing. So look at a rectangle. Okay, look at a rectangle. Now, what is the diameter of the rectangle? Let's say side is this A and this is B, right? So it would be the diagonal, right? Hmm? Yeah. 
So what would be its length? Square root of a square plus b square. So here we cannot Can you see it, screen? I don't know why it suddenly got closed. Hello? Yes, sir, we can see yes, sir. Okay. Right. So this part, this is not the correct one because we are now looking at actually the diagonals. So this should be, this should be what? To do the M, So each of them will have this 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 length and it would be square root of summation bj minus aj square j from one to right is this fine does it make sense Yeah, the diameter relation between this, uh, this this diameter of the original to the diameter of the, what I get in the kth step, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. So now we know this intersection is empty. So here, let me erase this part. This part actually, yeah, this part we need to erase. Okay, so now what we know is the following. We know by applying lemma to, well, here uh, again, again, here I would write, like to write here such that k well, KM such that KM plus one contain in KM for all M in N. So we have this property as well because we are we are looking at the sub subdivision of one box. So by applying lemma two, we get that intersection of km m natural number is not empty right um, our claim is claim intersection of km m belongs to n is just one point let's say x naught Suppose there exist two points x naught and y naught in in intersection K M M is in N. Then the diameter of the intersection K M is distance is is greater or equal to distance from x naught to y naught. Well, here I should write x naught not equal to y naught. So this is a, this is a contradiction since 
piston diameter of km which is 1 over 2 to the power m summation uh, bj square bj minus aj square square root tends to 0 as m tends to infinity so this means diameter of intersection km is 0 hence hence x naught has to be equal to y naught it's a contradiction so so that means intersection contains exactly one point we call it x naught okay so now this is this is what we need to do we got a one point now let's uh, let's consider a neighborhood right so x naught belongs to k right so that was given right what was given k k was this so x naught was in in k that means x naught belongs to let's say u alpha naught for some alpha naught belongs to the index set that means uh, well this is this is correct but before that we need to choose epsilon so that is fine you don't need to choose epsilon before that so this implies there exists epsilon greater than zero such that balls radius epsilon and center at x naught lies in u alpha naught. I choose m large enough such that 1 over 2 to the power m times times what times summation bj minus aj square equal to the power half j from 1 to n is less than epsilon this means this implies uh, m large enough right so here m large enough so that this yeah. so you you can make it precise saying choose m naught large enough such that this is less than c so at the m -th, m naught step whole diameter is less than epsilon which means the the intervals a one m naught B one M naught cross A N M naught B N M naught lies in B X naught epsilon. Okay. So this is it, right? So this means this, which is what is this? This is KM naught. So KM naught containing B X naught epsilon containing U alpha naught. So this means U alpha naught or u alpha 
alpha is in index set has a finite subcover for the set km naught right and this is a contradiction this is a contradiction to our assumption right it shouldn't k k no km not is chosen in such a way that it does not this cover this cover does not have a finite sub cover but we got a contradiction here. so that means every open cover of k has a finite sub right so this means k is compact any question here in the proof any question So those interested in analysis can think of whether this theorem is true for, well, yeah, for, for, for metric space. Of course, you don't have an interval, the next person. So theorem, this, this is generally called the Uniborn theorem. A closed subset. Oh, sorry. A subset of Rn is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded. Okay, so what about this part? Have you seen it? Yeah, we have proved. So you have proved a compact subset that a compact subset is always closed, right? Subset is closed now why should it be bounded yeah uh, you can uh, enclose every single point in a unit open ball yeah this will give an open cover of the set. Mm -hmm. So it has a finite sub cover. Mm -hmm. And the finite union will be uh, finite. Or rather finite? bounded. The finite union of these open balls will be bounded. Open balls around? So what kind of open balls will you take? The open balls in the finite sub cover. Of course, what open balls are you going to take? You are going to take open balls around every point? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's a there is a better way to. So, what is a bounded set? It can be contained within some open wall. 
that is true which which is mean that means what the norm of x is less or equal to something right some m some fixed m right right okay so what do you do you look at those balls instead of instead of looking at this thing so consider b 0 n a 0 k p 0 k right collection of all x in cn such that norm of x is less than k yeah Oh, sorry, this is not CM, it's RM. Yeah, this is fine. So we are looking at concentric balls. Yeah. So you are looking at this is this. Right, this one. Yeah, radius. Oh, sorry. This is radius one. Maybe let me change the color. It's radius two. This is radius three. And so on. Okay. Now, does this form an open cover for any compact subset? Yeah. It does because it essentially covers all of Rn. All of Rn. So this actually, so clearly, union of B0k over k from 1 to infinity is equal to whole of Rn. All right, so therefore, any compact, compact subset K is contained in union K from 1 to infinity B0 K. Now this set, this set P zero K, so call this script A. K is is a natural number. C forms an open cover for K. Now this implies that C has finite subcover, right? Choose the largest K, largest K, K such that B zero K lies in the finite subcover. Right, choose the largest k, say k naught. So this means compact set k in v0 k naught. This means norm of x is less or equal to k naught for all x in k, which means k is bounded subset. All right, so this is the definition of bounded subset. A subset A is called bounded if there exists a K naught such that norm of X is less or equal to K naught for all X in K. All right, so is this clear? So 
so you get compact subset is bounded also so what about this this side so given k is closed and bounded to show k is compact how do you show it Yeah, anybody? Or, or any idea? How do you show it? So because k is bounded, uh, yeah. you can put it inside uh, one of those uh, k cells. Right, one of those. Which both. we already know is compact. Yeah. And this is a closed set. So the intersection of a closed set and a compact set is compact. Uh, yeah, so closed subset of a compact set. That is what you need to know. You need to show. So. So this is, in the beginning, I have given an exercise, right? We will use that. So this one, a closed subset of a compact set. Now it is compact. That is very easy, it's just a theory. So, so what do you need to show? Idea is C compact K as a closed subset of a compact set in R. And a class of compact set we know are the boxes, right? Closed boxes. Those are compact. So we need to put K inside the box. How do you put it in a box, right? So this is this is also the same procedure, right? Instead of here, we put this one in as ball. It's easy to write, but actually you can put in the following. So look at distance from 0 to x. And now look at supremum. x belongs to k. So is it finite? Yeah. Yes. OK, this is finite. Let's call this. So what you do, you this is this is actually kind of you have if it is if this is a compact set, you have somewhere zero, somewhere zero, and you want to find the distance from this biggest distance from here. All right. Fine. Now so that this k can be put so that this is it. Just convince yourself this is true. That k lies in minus m comma m cross minus m comma m cross minus m 
comma n right same interval you take yeah well if you need if if you if you have problem in convincing that it actually lies here instead of m you can actually put 2m if required minus 2m to 2m minus minus 2m to 2m and, and the all product of this product of the same interval right now this is this set is a compact set set by previous theorem All right, so this implies, and k is closed, so k lies inside there, so closeness will not change, will not be changed actually, so this implies k is a closed subset of the compact set, set minus m to m cross minus m to m cross minus m to m. All right. This implies k is also compact. Yeah, is the proof clear? Is the proof clear? You can ask if you have any question. Now, once you know this one, then you, you actually get a lot of examples of compact sets, right? B0 K closer is compact. Right, the sphere S zero K is compact. Right, so once you know closed and bounded set is compact, and that is the characterization, you know a lot of examples. We you know all actually. Yeah. So uh, this is another exercise. Prove that. He said K R N is compact. If and only if every infinite set subset of K has a limit point in K. This is also if and only. So prove this. Of course, you can use this in world theorem here. So it is not very difficult to prove. Rather, it's easy one. But do write yourself that this is an unfind and convince yourself that this is true. Right? So a corollary to this exercise. Every every bounded subset of R N has a limit point. Right? You have done it in in case of R, right? Bolzano stress theorem. Yeah. Same is true here also. Okay, so we I have one minute. 
Mm. Yeah, okay, I'll not. Uh, so, what we'll next study is what is called connectedness. So, mainly, some will start with path connected, which is simple to understand, and then we'll go into the characterization of connectedness, the main definition of connectedness. Uh, okay, so if you have any question here, please ask. So these are important things. So learn it properly. If you have a question, you can ask, you can send me an email, or you can write or post in, 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 in Willard. Yeah, any question? So the last, uh, shouldn't it be every infinite bounded subset? Every infinite? Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, if it is finite, you just don't have bound. Yeah, yeah, true. Infinite. Yeah, that was the theorem in R as well, right? So if it is not infinite, you don't have a limit. All these points as well. Okay, yeah, any other question? Thanks for this. Any other question? Okay, if there is nothing, then I'll stop presenting.